Listening? Anyway, we need to talk about how to get out of this situation. Futaba's monitoring of Akechi's phone has confirmed it. He did indeed have an ulterior motive. It's on a completely different level than just that. Not only was he trying to frame us, but he was the true culprit behind the mental shutdowns. His offer to assist us was simply a ploy to frame the Phantom Thieves and kill him. If we go into Sis's palace, as he suggests, we'll likely be met by a large ambush of police forces. To think he would be this far gone. I know now what it means to feel a chill down my spine. Furthermore, he wishes to bring a police squad from reality into the palace. If the eight of us can enter at once, it's not inconceivable to think a larger group is possible. He may even be able to bring in vehicles or other special pieces of equipment. So, oh, this really was just a setup to shift the blame onto us. He made us go after Okumura. Then once we triggered the change of heart, he killed him. And he told us he had seen the true culprit, but it was him the entire time! The whole time he was working with Makoto's sister, he was really just some homicidal maniac. Come on, we gotta take that bastard to catch you down. Isn't that recording we got enough proof to do it? No, Akechi is merely a tool. His orders come from elsewhere. The grand mastermind behind this all. An unimaginable fiend capable of arranging the murder of a suspect inside of a police station. Unless we find out who that is, we will continue being targeted even if we defeat Akechi. But what means do we have of learning his identity? We'll have to make Akechi say it. Though once we do, that mastermind will likely eliminate us. I think that will be the case eventually, regardless of whether or not we learn his identity. The only reason it hasn't happened yet is because we're an easy target to blame for his crimes. If he realizes that's no longer possible and abandons that plan, he may opt to kill us immediately. Damn it! So we don't got a choice but to go with that bastard's suggestion. But if we go into the palace like we're told, he'll get arrested and then Akechi will kill him! Palace... Alice. Actually, there's something I'd like to say regarding... Aha! We can use the palace to our advantage! What's this all of a sudden? There's a way. A way to get past Akechi and get the Mastermind to lay off of us, all while learning his identity. Really? You gotta be kidding me! If he wants to kill the guy, why not let him? That is, inside of a palace. Yes. We could have him kill the cognitive version, all the while believing he killed the real one. Yeah, that's it! It seems that's our only option. Listen close, everyone. I have a plan for how we can carry this operation out. Ever since the death of their teenage leader, the Phantom Thieves have fallen silent. However, the police intend on continuing this investigation until the case is fully solved. I'm sorry I'm late. I had to finish a few things at work. Where are they? Waiting upstairs. Go tell them to come on down. I'm gonna fetch him. You're... her sister, correct? Makoto told me everything. Futaba-chan, I'm sorry that I caused you so much trouble this past summer. Eh, it's ancient history now. Man, that goddamn detective! Look who's here. Ah. <laughs> hey, you big bastard. How have you been? Thank goodness. It truly is a relief to see her face. I bet that moron Akechi don't even know we tricked him yet. Still, how'd you pull this off? Isn't this guy considered dead? You weren't told anything? I heard my sister brought him here, though. Yeah, she came over in a taxi, dumped him off, and told me to keep him safe. It was right after they announced he had died, too. Almost gave me a heart attack. I didn't have time to explain. Hey, shouldn't we tell Boss what really happened? 
We wanted to make our enemy believe the leader of the Phantom Thieves was dead. What? What we did was make that enemy kill his fake in the metaverse. Uh, ho hold on a sec. Enemy? Fake? What are you talking about? The true culprit behind all these incidents set us up. Our goal here was to determine their identity. True culprit? I see. So you guys were going up against someone else. It was Goro Akechi. You knew beforehand that he was the traitor, didn't you? Akechi himself gave us the chance to strike back. He made one fatal mistake. Couldn't you have just said from the beginning that Akechi was the real culprit? That wasn't something we could simply bring up. We couldn't have you suspect Akechi. Besides, neither you nor the other investigators would have believed something like that, would you? True. Akechi was credited with the arrest of the Phantom Thieves. Not even I would think he was the culprit. In other words, you left him alone on purpose. That was a bold move. God, I can't keep up with any of this stuff. Uh, wait, so what was this mistake Akechi made? What did he do? He slipped up in regards to Morgana's voice. You mean a cat? Yes, Morgana can talk. Uh, uh, sorry, was that supposed to be a joke? Oh, our apologies. That's completely true. You surprised? Does that mean he said something just now as well? But you don't understand him, do you? That's how it was for all of us at first, too. When you're in the metaverse, Mona talks like a normal person. Once you hear that and your brain realizes he can actually talk, you start to understand him in reality. It's a change in cognition, most likely. Thanks to Akechi's lame acting, we figured out something was up. When we talked to Akechi at the school festival, he was acting like he just realized Mona could talk. But we already saw him drop a mega hint about it way earlier. Oh, I know a place! I want to go to that huge pancake-looking place we passed on the way here! Oh, am I mistaken? I thought I heard something about delicious pancakes. Mona was the only one who was talking about a pancake. That meant Akechi'd already been in the metaverse by then. And since he was lying to us about that, we assumed he had a hidden motive behind contacting us. It seemed odd upon further thought. His reaction to my pancake comment was an honest one, after all. That said, we weren't so naive to overlook something like that. That's why we asked Vitaba-chan to wiretap his phone. I pretended to be interested in checking the phone out, but I was actually planting my app. My heart was pounding while I was doing it, though. Even that ace detective could never have imagined a program being installed so quickly. Futaba's quirky nature proved to be a great help. That was just an act! After a few days of listening, this confirmed his betrayal. Then I'll guide the police into her palace and have them catch the Phantom Thieves in the act. That would be the only way to arrest them, given their methods. I'll deal with them after that. Let me see. We could say he stole the guard's gun and committed suicide during his imprisonment. How about that? Public security questioning will occur on the first day. And with that room, my task will be simple. Is this for real? Yes, the guard will be one of ours. We'll have to eliminate him after to destroy the evidence, though. So they plan to get rid of that guard from the beginning. Well then, I will make the arrangements the day after the arrest. And thus, the dangerous criminal responsible for the mass mental shutdowns shall end his own life. When he does, you will become a great hero who saved Japan from evil. As will I, of course. I knew he was acting strangely, but to think he was this far gone... He's no ace detective. Akechi is the perpetrator behind the mental shutdown crimes. On top of that, there's someone else commanding Akechi. Someone with great authority. So great that they can order an assassination in a police station. That's why we had to make a move before they did. 
I see. We baited Akechi into Sis's palace, making him dispose of our leader's fake, but think he killed him. Can you elaborate on that in more detail? What exactly happened in my cognitive world? We're sorry for using you without your permission. Your palace had all the conditions we needed. What conditions? First, we required a place inside the cognitive world that was the same as in reality. That place is based on the real world after all. Anywhere that's not warped looks just like normal. That's why nobody but the person who uses the nav even realizes they're in the metaverse. Back with Kamoshida, we came in from the station without even noticing. You totally can't tell the difference if there ain't any distortions around. We had already investigated Nijima-san's palace when Makoto brought the suggestion to us. I was seriously impressed by that suggestion. To be honest, I didn't quite understand it, but I went along with it. Yeah, it's good we have her heading up our operations. Makoto is normally so calm as well, but once her mind is set, she gets oddly impulsive. I did have a bit of a rivalry forming with Akechi, but I just couldn't contain myself anymore once you became a target, sis. The reason I joined the Phantom Thieves was to heal your heart, after all. My own achievements were all that mattered to me. I was desperate. I wasn't myself at all. I'm sorry I couldn't see that. That goes for the both of us. We heard from Mako-chan that you were going to do the interrogation, Mijima-san. And regarding its location, I take it you use the data from my laptop? I'm sorry. <laughs> Go on. There were two things we were able to confirm while we were checking the metaverse. First, our clothes didn't change when we were down in the interrogation room. Second, the scenery and details outside of the palace proper were the same as in the real world. Once we heard that from Makoto, we secretly went to check it out without a catchy knowing. There was also one more thing we absolutely needed to make this work. A perfect cognitive replica of him in the Metaverse's interrogation room. Since he had yet to be caught though, there obviously wouldn't be anyone in that room. Once we saw the casino guests and police officers, we were convinced this would work. They looked no different from actual living people. After that, we just had to work our way into the palace like usual, while keeping a catchy in the dark. Everything went as planned up until we defeated Sis's shadow. However, it was then that we were met with a terrifying, unexpected police ambush. As a result, even though we managed to grab the treasure, we couldn't get it out of the metaverse. Except that was all an act. We had prepared an empty briefcase beforehand and merely acted like we were taking the treasure. This was because we knew the police would be coming for us. We made sure before the operation that the police would be waiting to ambush us. And just as expected, he totally took the bait. Him getting captured by the police went exactly how we planned it. And I had been interrogating him with no knowledge of this. But how did you lure Akechi into this cognitive world's interrogation room? All I needed were the coordinates. <laughs> Akechi disposed of the fake in the palace and left thinking he had been victorious. It must have been truly hilarious for our leader who sat idly in the real world's interrogation room. Surely he was acting quite cocky by himself in that quiet chamber. So that's why you gave me your phone. I only took it because of what you told me. Ah, it's a shame I didn't have the opportunity to see that for myself. All I could do was try to handle all the messages that started coming to me on his phone. Huh. So in other words, I've been to the Metaverse. Albeit for a brief moment. In our experience, there is little danger when someone enters their own palace for so short a time. That's the other reason we had him give it to you. We needed you to listen to Alibaba, deceive the guard, and ultimately aid in his escape. By having you head back to the interrogation room, 
we could return you to the real world as well. I mean, I had to think of some way to keep you from running into a catchy mid-assassination. Huh. Astounding. I hadn't the slightest idea that such a grand operation was taking place within me. I'm so glad he was able to persuade you during the interrogation. Even though we knew Akechi's plan, we were pretty worried about that part. <laughs> True. Why is that? Without Sis on our side, Futaba's plan and subsequent breakout would have never been possible. That persuasion was easily our greatest gamble. We couldn't consult Sis beforehand. It was absolutely the make or break moment of the entire plan. Still, I'm surprised you could convince me in such a short time. Were you confident you could do it? Then it truly was a do or die situation? That's crazy. Either way, I can't believe you went for such a risky idea. If we could just tell you the true culprit's plan, I knew you'd realize the bigger picture. Realize that our leader was telling the truth and that there was a greater evil to pursue. As a result, we emerged victorious. Then the reason you kept this a secret from me was so you could catch the true culprit, correct? Yes. Plus, you had lost control of yourself at the time. This is stunning. <laughs> All I can really do is laugh. I've kind of figured out that you guys made a catchy kill a fake. But what did you do about the body? The police never even checked it. Huh? They had a coroner working to ensure his death was reported as a suicide. That coroner didn't take one look at the scene and just passed along a falsified death certificate. The bad guys have that much influence? Murder in a police station would be reckless otherwise. We also knew of a possible conspirator. Thanks to Futabachan's messages and the guard's demeanor, I eventually came to understand. And since the higher-ups at the police knew nothing of this, they were thrown into disarray. As a result, his suicide during imprisonment was reported on the news, just as Akechi planned. And with that confusion, he was able to escape with Nijima-san's help. I made sure nobody would check the morgue for his body, and thanks to that, nobody knows he survived. Thinking back to the interrogation, though, I can't believe what they did to him. The callous use of violence? and even drugs, is utterly abnormal. If he had lost consciousness and hadn't been able to tell Sis about the phone, he would have died. I'm truly glad you made it back safe. I almost became one of your assailants as well. It still freaked me out when I saw the suicide on the news, though. We made sure to live normal lives while he was being interrogated to avoid drawing any suspicion. Even with that, I couldn't help but worry for him in my heart. Well, I knew right away that her plan worked out. I wanted to believe, but considering what we were up against... Ryuji's a bit on the dense and carefree side. Can it, Cat? I had to be patient and avoid this place until things settled down. I finally feel relieved. We knew he was alive, but it was difficult to not worry until we could confirm it in person. Now that I think about it, my interrogation was just a formality for the head commander. What a joke, letting me interrogate someone who was meant to die. <sighs> they just wanted to avoid backlash. Very well. From here forward, I will do my utmost to assist you. You saved me, after all. That's reassuring to hear. I'll do whatever I can to help, too. Just let me know. Let's take a break for now, though. This old brain is pooped. Oh, and feel free to use the first floor when you guys want to get together to talk. You'll need a hideout where you can be safe. Just say the word, and I'll close shop early. Are you sure? This guy can't leave. Plus, you won't make much progress if people can hear you from downstairs. It's not like this place is the liveliest joint in town. It won't be a huge loss for me. Let us accept his offer. What a great man. <laughs> That sounds familiar. It's me, Akechi. Enter.
That's the death certificate of the principal offender, correct? Is there a problem with it? No, nothing in particular. More importantly, you've done well with regard to the prosecutors. The cause of death for the SIU director has been settled as a stroke. I had him work quite substantially on forging evidence. His loss should be mourned. It was thanks to his efforts that I could enter the Phantom Thieves' interrogation room, too. The SIU is in disarray with his death. I'll take my time choosing a successor after the elections. At any rate, I'm now praised as a hero, and I owe it all to the Phantom Thieves. All possible hindrances are now gone. There's no doubt that this election is mine. <laughs> And on to our next story, the snap election for the House of Representatives. Discussion is swirling around potential nominees as the deadline for candidacy announcement nears. Candidates will announce on the 23rd of this month, while voting will be held on the 18th of next. Elections, huh? Eh, don't matter to us. It's not like we can vote in them yet anyways. Why don't we resume our conversation? Well, the Phantom Thieves are back together! We can finally take it to Akechi and the bastard back in him! Have you figured out who's behind all this? Akechi accidentally let that slip after the murder. He said, Shido-san. Shido? Feels like I've heard that somewhere. He is unmistakably a man of power if he has such strong connections to the police. Shido? Could it be Masayoshi Shido? Uh, who? I believe he's a politician. Remember, Ryuji? You said his speech was too loud. For real? It's certainly possible that Shido is the mastermind. Huh? Do you have some kind of evidence? Nothing material. However, there are various conditions which align with that possibility. First, he would profit from damage done to the current administration by the psychotic breakdowns. He's maintained a negative stance toward the Phantom Thieves and has gained tremendous popularity. On top of that, he'll most likely become the next Prime Minister if he wins this upcoming election. No! Did he set us up with that election in mind? If he is behind all this, that would be in stark opposition to his honest public image. So his current position and popularity is just him benefiting from the mental collapses. We'll make him have a change of heart! No matter what it takes. Mom. <sighs> Shido, huh? What is the matter? I had a feeling he was wrapped up in all this. Just based on the connections I had from my previous job. I think the one who crushed Wakaba's research and confiscated her materials was probably Shido. From the moment Wakaba died, I had a hunch he was involved. But there wasn't anything I could do. So I chose to protect Futaba and went into hiding. Why didn't you say that sooner? You guys would have definitely gone after him if I had. He would have just killed all of you, no doubt. That's what he usually does to people who get in his way. Originally, I was looking into the mental shutdown cases. It was then that I accidentally stumbled upon government research regarding the psychotic breakdowns. So I tracked down the whereabouts of that research data and met with the associated parties. Boss was one of those parties. I would never have imagined all of this was connected. The mental shutdowns, psychotic breakdowns, Shido, and even the Phantom Thieves' actions. Way back when, Shido kept saying he was going to be Prime Minister one day. Nobody believed him, though. What's going to happen to this country if Shido becomes Prime Minister? What about the world? <sighs> the issue is simpler than that. This is nothing more than yet another selfish adult trying to impose his will on the public. We gotta expose that rotten bastard! Yeah, we'll do it like always. Then let's check the nav. Masayoshi Shido, the guy running for Prime Minister. Found. Got a hit! Well, duh. It ain't a surprise he has one. Where would the location be? What kind of things go through a politician's head? I always think of dirty money and shady actions. What does he do? Uh, and where? We don't got a clue about this guy's life. 
His palace must be somewhere that politicians frequent. Any ideas? Thank you.